Yo, what is going on my fellow weebs? Chrono here and welcome back to the channel. So today we'll be going over everything that you need to know to get the most out of the seasonal points exchange shop for the first half of the spring event. But before we jump to that, if you guys are new here, I'm Chrono, I primarily cover PSO2 content. We'd much appreciate the subscribers work our way towards that 10k mark, hopefully by the end of this year. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. So there's not a whole lot you need to pay attention to when it comes to seasonal shop. We're going to go over what's important, what I usually grab from it, and what you may want to keep an eye out for, maybe start building up for. And the overall points cost is going to have, or it's going to be to go ahead and clean out the shop for everything that I think is valuable. But hold on a sec, I'll meet you guys in game. All right, so here we are at the point shop at Zandy's Points. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shop itself. I haven't actually purchased anything from the point shop. I'm going to do a very satisfying buy everything at once for myself sort of thing. Uh, since I know how much I'm going to need to farm to get everything that I want. Uh, but that being said, we'll go ahead and go over each thing. Uh, I know not everyone needs a, like, a video guide like this. But there are some newer players who are picking up the game for the first time, who aren't really sure what's worth purchasing versus what's not worth purchasing, and some other players who really just never pay attention to this. With seasonal points being super easy to get a hold of and a lot of really great things from the seasonal shop and a lot of it actually playing into some very expensive augments, it is worth at least thinking about what you want to purchase. So it's a no-brainer for me when it comes to the uh, scratch tickets. I always grab these. I mean, they're a bit expensive, uh, but they are awesome for star gems later on down the line since you can trade in these for special scratch tickets. Um, if you happen to get everything you need, uh, you can use the select tickets for star gems. So I always pick these up. Very, very simple, very straightforward, very easy. Uh, also want to go ahead and grab seasonal or not seasonal. Yeah, seasonal stuff. I don't know why I thought it was going to call something else. Basically the seasonal cosmetics, right? Go ahead and pick up seasonal cosmetics. I like to, you can skip over these. It's up to you, but I always collect seasonal cosmetics just because, hey, it's a reminder of that season itself and you can compare it to something else and you never know when you might need them. So I grab all the seasonal cosmetics, kind of a no brainer. They're usually fairly inexpensive as well. I mean, like as you can see, I barely went, what it was like, 50k in points and then we add this in that's 15 more k like that's nothing you get about 100k almost just doing your daily so no big deal i always grab the star gems star gems are a very very hot commodity you want to get those and then of course grab the special scratch tickets because that can equate to star gems as well now here's a little tip for those of you guys who find yourselves being super irritated at upgrading weapons and upgrading armor and all this other stuff grab the seasonal weapons two reasons for this one you can slap one of the augments from uh, from the gold prim two weapons onto this just by upgrading it a little bit I'm upgrading it by one space. So you can throw one of the weapons in there and upgrade it and it goes 61 and then you can go ahead and slap the augment on it. And you can take all of those extra gold prim swords and throw them into these weapons and you can either sell them if you have access to the shop. People do purchase these as upgrade um, upgrade fodder or you can hold on to them and use them for yourselves. So what I usually do, or what I need to start doing more of, or what I usually recommend doing, is picking them all up. Very inexpensive. You can buy these off the market. I don't recommend it personally. It's up to you individually. For someone who actually needs to use these on different ships, of course, you can only buy two per account, so don't waste them on one ship or you need them on somewhere else. But I usually pick up all of them, or again, I recommend picking up all of them to go ahead and just throw all of your gold prims into. Now, since they made the change of putting gold prims, you can change them into the actual augment that gives you like, you know, the big chunk of experience for it. It's not as important um, since you don't have to worry about space as much. This is more of a space saving sort of thing, but it also does just give you some upgrade materials basically for free and somewhere you can just throw upgrade materials into in case you want to clean out your storages. We might hit the points where we have so many endemios that we don't really need the uh we don't really want to keep stacking them up as much as we have been so it is a nice place you can toss these into it does cost a bit of money of course to upgrade but you can create upgrade fodder that people might purchase so it's worth keeping in mind but i would definitely do your own research take a look at the market see how much they're selling for um and of course with this video people are, may start doing it so keep that in mind when you are going towards it if you're looking at it from a money-making perspective units can be used for a similar reason um these are 60 already they go up to out of 80 you can purchase six of them but you may also want to save these units to use them as your dual quest units since they're already plus uh what was it, plus 60 and they're maxed 80. i know there are better armor or there is better armor you can use but you don't have to limit break this so you can go ahead and save yourself some resources and some money uh, if you would need to limit break this basically you'd be spending 400k per unit uh, which can be kind of rough for some people. I don't think it's that expensive personally, but if you're trying to save yourself some money, this is totally fine. And most of your damage from dual quest augments comes from the augments, not the armor that they're going to be on. Totally fine to go with something that has a little bit less damage. 
far as this stuff goes, I don't really value any of these. They're not very expensive in the grand scheme of things, but it just adds on unnecessary, like, you know, cost to something you really don't need to. Um, I like to grab the regional specific stuff. So the quartz, the scales, the Blizzardium and Infernium, all these uh, are used as part of resources for other things when you're upgrading. Granted, they're not always super useful or super necessary from the very get go, but things do pop up that tend to use them. So I think it's personally worth going ahead and picking them up since they're the rare drop stuff. Uh, everything else realistically is very easy to come by. So I just kind of pass that stuff over. But this is something you also can technically pass over. Not too important. Uh, this is basically a free um, a free Rayar. So if you want to try to roll another Rayar, it's worth picking up. If you want to skip over the Rayar, that's totally fine. They hand these out like candy nowadays. But if you're someone, let's say you're trying to upgrade uh fixes you're trying to get a good fix on a weapon you're trying to make multiple weapons it's a good idea to go ahead and pick this up it's basically another free rayar aegis integra grab these aegis integra basically are um our aegis souls so i always pick up aegis integra very simple you can skip growth mints because realistically growth mints you get so many of them and it's so expensive to buy all these growth mints i mean i have what uh, yeah, I have 5,000 growth mints right now. You don't really need them uh, for many things. If you're someone who maybe is still working on your LC augments, maybe you want to use some of these growth mints from here, but I don't feel like it's very worth it. Uh, dread scales. Dread scales are a little expensive here. Not the end of the world when it comes down to it. You are going to be putting yourself in another 600 points, 600k points, but you can pretty effectively skip over dread scales if you don't need anything from the dread scale exchange shop. It's not a high commodity sort of thing, um, at least not to me personally. Of course, if there's something in the shop that you find very important, feel free to pick it up, but it is going to net you an extra 600k points that you're going to need. Very expensive. Uh, X cubes. X cubes are not very difficult to get a hold of if you're playing one class, but if you're playing multiple, you're not over leveling consistently. You may be not stacking up tons of X cubes. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot right now because I've been leveling up other classes. I also haven't been playing a super huge amount, and we actually are using X cubes more now for, uh, for exchanges in the X cube exchange. Um, weekly. So more X cubes are being used uh, more often. So maybe you want to pick up some extra X cube from here. It's only 40 of them. It's again, not super expensive to go ahead and pick them up. You're not making your bill that much more expensive. What, 30K? Not that big. I think, well, that's 40. Yeah, that's 40K. Yeah, about 40K. Not too bad there. A uh, photon chunk A's and B's. Don't really need them. You get a ton of them just by playing at the moment. Arms of Finder 1 and 2's. Again, you get a ton of them unless you're very early on in the game and you need to get some of these to go ahead and complete some upgrades. Good place to grab some of them, but it's not something I personally would clean out. Um, TA customization discs. Again, this is one of those situations are if you need some of these, go ahead and pick them up. But there's so many resources that give these to you in the game at the moment that you're going to find that you have a ton of them and they're not very expensive on the market if you want to go with a last minute Meseta choice. Not super high up there, but I personally feel like it's not something that you really need to clean out. The Defi Series 4 augments. Uh, this is up to you personally. I'm not sure how much these are selling on the market right now. Actually, now that we say that, I kind of want to go double check. We might check it at the end of this. But if you're someone who's actually going to do dual quests for, these are going to be very useful for you. They are expensive. It's going to set you back to get all these, I believe, 720k points. Um, however, that means that you don't have to worry about purchasing them. That does mean that you can go ahead and make a full set of units and a weapon to go ahead and farm dual quest um, phase four, and you're good to go. This is substantially better than it was previously as beforehand i think it was like 1.7 mil just to make one weapon uh, 720k to make all of your gear feels a lot better so they definitely this is definitely a w i think they just knocked a zero off of it or something like that and it was substantially more reasonable um if you need your lc augments you can pick them up from here they're a little expensive from here to be perfectly honest like it's kind of crazy how the LC augments are more expensive than the, the dual quest augments, to be honest. The dual quest augments are a good price. I feel like the LC augments should be around the same thing, um, though. Everything in the game gives you LC augments, so you really don't need to worry about purchasing them again unless you're very early on. This is not something I would worry about cleaning out over time. You're just going to stack up tons and tons and tons of LC augments. Uh, then you won't really need to get a ton more. I think the only LC augment I think I'm low on might be like Gladia, yeah, it's Gladia Soul, and that's because I keep trying to get my Gladia Soul to stick, a regular Gladia Soul to stick, and I keep failing a 25% chance. I think I'm up to 20 fails right now on a single unit, which is extraordinarily frustrating because I could have just bought 10 and went with it. But such as RNG, what are you going to do? Anyway, moving on, did I want to fit that in the video somehow? Yes, I am very irritated by Gladia Soul luck. It's so frustrating, but 
as far as other things to pick up gigas might gigas precision and gigas technique all worth grabbing definitely worth clearing out a little expensive but these are used towards making gigas mass day and gigas mass day is used towards making what is it the I can't remember what it's called, but like a new Gigas Mass Day or something along those lines. So definitely pick these up and they're worth purchasing out. Kind of sad there's only 10 right now, but they will get more as the second half of the event pops up. Dreadkeeper. I don't know if Dreadkeeper 4s are still worth grabbing, but the 5s definitely are. So this is one of be those you want to check the market, see if it's actually worth making Dreadkeeper 4s into 5s. Sometimes the 5s are cheaper to just purchase outright and then you can skip the 4s. But having both means that you can go ahead and upgrade if you're someone who is creating Grand Dreadkeeper. Alpha reactors, it's just the money. It's, I mean, it's points for money. I think it's worth it personally. It's if you happen to have the extra points left over, it's kind of low on the totem pole as far as what you need. So I would go ahead and grab it if you happen to have the points. And that's basically it, right? So this is not counting, you know, going super ham on, or this is not counting the, the Defi augments, right? I'm not counting the Defi augments not counting uh what else not counting the dread scales if we threw dread scales in there maybe dread scales aren't too bad not counting the um the extra rare so the extra rare you're looking at about 2.4 mil that seems like a lot it's not honestly i think where i'm gonna go with is probably somewhere right here on up at 2.6 mil overall so need two mil more to go I realistically have only farmed for about three hours one day. I want to say two and a half hours roughly on stream and then just did my dailies and I'm at 600K. So not really that bad. The LTQ is a pretty easy farm and this is over like two weeks. The events are usually over a month. So you have plenty of time to go ahead and buy out everything that you need. And a lot of times the second uh, round of the event is not super important in most cases. It's just like they, they restock some of the stuff here. Um, you end up being able to skip out on some of the other things. The super, I believe the scratch tickets tend to come back and things like that. So realistically speaking, it seems like a huge hurdle to go over. It's not nearly as bad as it like really could be, or at least as it used to be. So 2.6 mil is about what I'm going to recommend as far as if you want to clean out the shop. But everyone is different. Everyone is individual. Your choices may vary. So take it with a grain of salt. It's going to be different for everybody. That's my goal. Let me know what yours is in the comments. But that's about it, guys. Uh, hopefully that helps out uh, anyone who is struggling with trying to figure out what they should be purchasing from the event shop, some different ways they can be used. While we're thinking about it, let's go check the Defi augments on the market because you can also get them as drops from content that you're doing. So if I just type in, I think it's what, 04. Here we go. You can just take this, copy it. I should find out what the crit augment is. So that's usually the most expensive. Oh, I need to put the BC slash. Yeah, they're not super expensive on the market because everyone has access to them. So you may opt to just go ahead and purchase them outright. This is uh, what's this one? This one is uh, potency, offensive PP recovery. Plus 50%. Did they change how all these work? Hold on. I'm now a bit curious. Let me double check and make sure that we haven't missed anything on these because I feel like it's going to be important for the overall should you purchase these or not. I plan to make these, so I kind of took for granted what they all do, but let's see. Offensive PB recovery, increased PB uh, attacking, damage resistance, PB cooldown, crit rate, and potency floor. Okay, cool. Let me check the crit rate one. That's usually going to be the most expensive one is the crit rate augment. So you can kind of gauge what your cost is going to look like based on that augment alone most of the time. Yeah, and the crit rate augments 5k so honestly if you really have the extra money you really don't want to deal with farming the extra points you could skip buying all of those um which would save you about 760k and just purchase them outright from the market because a lot of people are going to be buying these thinking other people need them meaning the price is going to be driven way way down again i would highly recommend checking these out on your own shops the shops are different on each ship so prices may vary Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below, what you guys are going to be going for as far as your goal is concerned. Again, I think the LTQ is not too bad to farm points, uh, just farm like an hour a day, maybe two. Maybe you're someone who likes to get it all done at once. You can farm a bit over time. Keep in mind, you do also get points for doing your dailies. So you may also just accumulate the points you need across the entire event, and it might take you a lot less time or it's a lot less time that you have to input into farming. Either way, guys, thanks for watching all the end. I'm bad at ending videos. Do the YouTube stuff. It helps out a ton. Take care, my friends.
Peace out.